Oh, I fucked up again. There we go. Now, triply fucked up. Man. Right out of the gate, man. I had... Every, every, yeah, you may as well just, like, you know, go back off and, like, redo it again. Because that was, that was terrible. Hey! Shout out to... Or30XX? Or30XX? Subscribe... Yeah, dropped a, a, a dropped a Prime with their Amazon account, so you can connect your Amazon and your Twitch and get a free subscription to any Twitch channel that you should graciously give to this channel to continue this amazing content that is Pig's Pod. We would appreciate it. We love you. Thank you. Enjoy your bacon. Now, back to the show. This, this, is, this is where you talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? 85. Yep, yep, I got it. Yeah, I've got it now set up where I can just double check it in that, uh, in Twitch and be like, oh yeah, the last episode I did here was episode 84. I know, it's, it's what happens when we put out more than one episode a quarter. Yeah, I know. We need to take we need to take at least three or four months off. <laughs> mm-hmm. That'd be terrible. Hey, what's up, Oreo? See, I am so happy I got out of crypto when I got out of crypto because I literally pumped and dumped, baby. I got my, I made my fortune. Oh, and I won't say four. I mean, I did make pretty good. Uh, I made enough that I was able to buy um, clone trooper armor to put together out of the profits. Out of the profits, mind you. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, it was quite a few. I had Dogecoin. I had uh, a little bit of Ethereum. I had uh, a bunch of other random uh, crypto tokens, uh, Anchor and Amp. And um, uh, hey, I'm, I'll look. I can tell you the ones I owned. GameStop debacle. Okay. Not be not because I lost like a bunch of money on that. I didn't make anything on it, but because I just saw, oh, I get it now. The whole system's rigged, and so I just, I didn't say I'm done playing. All I did is I took everything out, and I said I'm gonna research and figure out how to play the game like the rest are playing it. Right. Because it's literally a rigged game. But if you can figure out how to play it, you can make out like fucking crazy. Yeah, you you, you have to spend a lot of time kind of researching and looking for um you know, you know looking for <coughs> looking for information, looking for, you know, graphs, following yeah. a lot of charts. Uh I then... had I had like the Weeble app on my computer mm -hmm. and I had some algorithms and some sheets I was following and a bunch so I'd research like the day before I was going to trade some stuff. Uh, I was doing day trading, actually. I don't know if I ever told you this because we don't, weren't doing the podcast at the time. I think you had told me that you were, you were looking at doing that, but it hadn't really. Yeah. So I started doing it. I put $1,500 in, which is like not a lot to some people, but a lot if you have nothing. <laughs> uh, put $1,500 in. I was day trading. Uh, every trade I do would only be a couple hundred dollars, so it wasn't like massive. Uh, and I forget who... The person that first got me interested was a uh, a professional gamer, actually, a Halo player, uh, Maniac. Who some of you might know, some of you might not. He's a older Halo pro, but he was actually talking about it. I was like, oh, let me look into this uh, swing trading, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with it, any kind of trading have heard of. It's kind of day trading, but it's also different. You basically, you do a bunch of math and you try to outsmart the system by going, all right, I'll go in. If it goes up, I get out here. If it goes down, I get out here. And if you do your math right, 
uh, you should pretty much win. Even if you, even if you get half of your, you know, trades wrong, you still end up ahead. Even if you, and then, you know, depending how far you want to swing it and how safe you want to play it, you you can alter your numbers and you can literally be seventy percent wrong and still be up. Like so, I, yep. I was looking at it and I was running the math. I'm like, oh, this is. I I really like that. There's that. There's a built-in, uh, you know, depending how safe I want to be and how smart I want to be, like, built-in system that I can just move my numbers around and still come out on top. So I did it for a while. For a few weeks, I literally, I was like 70% right. So I was up, you know, several hundred dollars off of 1500 I'd literally, Which you know. Which is a huge, a huge growth. Considering, yeah, and, you know, and literally like two weeks. Because normally in the stock market, you put $1,500 in, you're not going to get $200 for three or four years. <laughs> yeah, you, you need to be working off, you know, 2 to 8% growth was, is wonderful yeah. in the stock market, which is way better than what the bank interest interest is paying right now. Yeah, so I was getting way more than that. I was getting... What the hell? Oh. I was doing really well, and then... I made some dumb choices and like so there was there was these two trades I made in particular one of them I was researching this company that sells dog tags that have like a GPS locator in them mm -hmm. and they had just like the day before the trade I was doing they had just announced uh, a new technology that they had uh, you know got a copyright on and trademarked and it was releasing within a couple months. I was like, oh, that's dope. Cool. And doing some other research on them and like everything looked good on them. I'm like, oh, they're going to go up. Like they got all this good shit going for them. They got new stuff going. So I, you know, I put my swing trade in, you know, if it goes up uh, this amount. And normally I had it, my up was higher. So I, st I stood to gain more if it went up. But my low, I, it would only, I could only let it fall like a s very small percentage before my thing would automatically pull me out, right? So that's why, that's how the numbers work. When I win, I win way more than what I lost when I lost, if that makes sense. Yep. It's simple math, but it's also confusing. And, and there was another uh, one that I was following and I had money in and they just announced chapter 11 bankruptcy <laughs> and like a bunch of bad stuff and the CEO like left and so then I pulled my stuff out of early I didn't even wait for it to fall I'm like oh that's gonna fall. I'm pulling it out now so I break even on it and that day you know after the one that I thought would go up that had the new trademarks and all this good stuff it went down and the one that I thought would go down because they announced bankruptcy and their CEO left and everything it went up <laughs> yeah, I so I lost them I lost on both of them and I was like, what? <laughs> so, and, and the one uh, where I messed up, um, the one, the, the pet company one, I'm like, all right, maybe investors or maybe it's, maybe it's a slow burn. Maybe it's going to come up. So I stupidly went in and removed my automatic pull from it dipping. And I was like, no, I'm going to write it out. It's going to go up. Never and second guess did. yourself. It didn't. It kept going down, which still to this day fucking blows my mind. It just kept going down, kept going down. It literally, uh, that several hundred dollars I had, I had got, gone <laughs> because of that one trade. So uh, I came out like 5 or $6 up mm -hmm. after doing it for like two months, which is not, I, I didn't lose money. But I also, my own selfish, emotional, completely ignored the numbers and made a stupid move. I should have just went, yep, yeah, it goes down. I guess you just never know. So I, I now have all my money out of there. I haven't been trading anymore, but I have done like, I've been messing around just doing like fake trades. And I've discovered that I'm wasting my time researching. You're better to just go in and pick randomly and yep. just set your numbers set your numbers it goes up uh you know say it goes up a dollar pull it goes down 20 cents pull something like that that that's I mean, actually what i did i had 10 percent and 10 percent and uh two percent 
Yeah, yeah those you are my do, numbers. You, yeah, so when you win, you win more than when you lose. Yeah. And depending where you put your numbers, like I said, you can be wrong 70% of the time and still winning in the end. So uh, I just haven't put money back in. I've kind of pulled out until I decide to put some stuff back in. Probably will next year. I mean, I still have... I nobody taught me finances because they don't teach it in school nope. and my parents and everybody most of my family other than my aunt which i'll get to in a second <laughs> most of them, they just didn't teach me finances so i had no retirement account i had no savings account I had, I had no savings so i have a retirement account now that i only started uh january of last year so a year and a half ago i think there's almost like five thousand in there so like I have it pulling a good amount of, you know, my paycheck as much as I possibly can. I've had to keep turning it down because the economy is fucking tanking. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it has a good amount for literally just barely starting it. I wish I started it 15 years ago. I wish I'd known. And I'm doing a Roth IRA because it's just very good. If you're gonna do gonna ask, if you're gonna do a wrong. retirement account, you might as well do a Roth IRA or you're doing it wrong. Now, the only the only reason why anyone would anyone should do or would do any, any another form of the IRA is if you are really wanting it to sit for a very very long time. Yeah, you know, if you're gonna knowing that you're, it. yeah knowing that you're never going to pull it out until you retire. Yeah, or give it to your kids or something. Right, because if would, you're if you're like I'm gonna hit eighty and then see what's in there and give it to my kids, then yeah, you might as well. But the Roth makes absolute sense because everything is going in post-tax. So the dollars that you're investing has already been taxed. So if you yeah, ever need so that money... now it's just sitting. Whenever it comes out, it just comes out. I'm right. not paying tax. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the true benefits of having a, a Roth IRA. And realistically, everybody that's working should go speak with some form of financial advisor, whether it's, mm -hmm. their, whether it's their bank or one of the name brand... Um, you know, I use Edward Jones. I, I don't know who you use. Um, but uh, Fidelity. Every, Fidelity, okay. Um, but that's who my company goes through. Well, but. yeah, that's fine. Well, I say my, mine's done independently, so it, it, uh, oh. so I have to uh, purpose, I have to make my own deposits and whatnot, yeah. which I haven't made deposits into in, in a good while. Okay. Um, See, that's where I'm lucky. My my company does a three percent match. So of that nice. five thousand, that's why I've built up five thousand over a year and a half. Yeah. Only, only like thirty eight hundred or something of that is mine. The rest was company match, like which is which is great. And they do a really high amount. Yeah. The company that I work for. <laughs> yeah. Any any business that's any business that's willing to do a matched IRA is is great. Well, it, it's great for two reasons. Number one, it's great for the company because they can they can provide a really nice benefit for their employees that they're not responsible for. That's the best part. Because they they don't manage it, they don't deal with it. It's not up to, uh, it's not up to them to handle everything. Everything falls on you. Uh -oh. Exactly, yeah. but it's a benefit for you. Yeah, it, and and then it's a great great benefit for, um, you know, for the employee because once again, you know they, you know you're 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 making these deposits that'll end up being, uh, what what is your IRA paying? Do you know what percentage? Mm, I'm not great. Four or five, maybe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's about where I'm at. I haven't looked at it in a minute. Uh, I uh, I did the thing. I actually went in and diversified it myself. So there's some in currency. There's some in international currency. There's some in uh, mutual fund. Like I went in and picked what I wanted individually. Right. I didn't because they have a thing you can just tick and then they'll pick everything. Right. Whether Which, you want like small, medium, or high risk investments. Yeah, and again, if you listen to people like Warren Buffett, it literally doesn't matter. Either way, over fifty years is a, probably about the same. Probably. But. <laughs> that's yeah, that's probably so. But no, it, let's see. I also come back to what I wanted to tell you here. In my crypto, this is I've sold out of all of this, but I invested. I had. AMP, BarnBridge, Balancer, Fetch.ai, Anchor, NKN, Bounce Token, and Shiba Inu, and Dogecoin. Um, okay. and, and then I had Ethereum in another account. Um, and they were just... Uh, 
a decentralized currency that was that or it was decentralized uh, coins that were created and traded for any type of securities exchange within the app that that it was done. Basically, the majority of the app, the majority of the the the, the crypto coin that um, I bought and traded in uh, came from websites or, or apps or or whatever whatever they were doing. Um, they would basically pay you to use a part of your computer as a server uh as like yeah. and, and anytime there was exchanges done on your computer for whatever process that they were doing uh it would generate either a a portion of a coin or a full to what it depended on it went from you know uh uh, app to app had different payouts and whatnot. So people that were were doing those ty- given those types of services or, or, do, or doing those services um, were selling their tokens and creating this trade. I never went into the generation side because I don't have a fucking computer for crypto mining essentially. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I bought, sold, and, tro- and, and, and traded um, just these coins and some of them. I mean, really, all of them here, um, or the, I will say the majority of them are trading at less than a penny, or, or excuse me, less than 10 cents in most cases, with the exception yeah. of a couple. I've, I've I traded in, let's see, Balancer was $5, is currently $5.08 a coin, um, and Bounce Token was $4.20 giggity um, a coin. Um and then I don't know what Ethereum's trading at trading at right now. Um, I think it's it, in the twenties. It, well, it I think it dipped back down below two thousand. I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't looked at Ethereum in quite some time. Yeah. Uh, so the weirdest part about crypto. Yeah, Ethereum Classic is trading at nineteen dollars a coin, and then well, I'll maybe. Have to look at the other one. But okay, we're gonna talk about cryptocurrency now. Yeah, we're gonna go deep into <laughs> it, guys. I Put your fucking hats or... on. We, we better let Fred play his intro song because he didn't get to last week. Oh, yeah. He's really bummed. Yeah, sorry, Fred. So welcome to the podcast. Oh, my God, we didn't record any of that. It's fine. We'll pull it from the VOD. <laughs> Do you have VODs? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can. As, okay. soon, as, soon as, we, as soon as it's finished, I'll upload it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We need Craig in here. Now recording. There's Craig. God damn it. Craig. <laughs> That's a good po- point to we'll start the podcast there. <laughs> so those of you that are it's, in the in the uh, in the in the Twitch chat. This is why you this is why you come to the live stream yeah, cuz you'll see. get you'll get more podcasts for your buck. <laughs> yeah, exactly for your Amazon Prime subscription. <laughs> oh, fucking Jesus. We're going to talk about crypto. Welcome to the show. Go ahead, friend. <laughs> Gamers run it. All right, welcome Jesus to the podcast. Christ. Episode eighty-five. Episode eighty-five. I hope you turned in, uh, tuned into the live stream and didn't miss out on the first twenty minutes. Uh. <laughs> For the longest time, we only had Craig, and then we had uh, Bimo for a minute, and like we haven't had Craig and Fred for very long. Now we've had them both for a minute. We should be used to making sure that they're both here. I like uh, how you keep saying we. We should be doing Yeah, we things. should we be should making be. sure. Yeah, you're supposed to remind me. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I run one side, uh, you run the other. It works out pretty well. Except yeah, we'll, this time. We'll, we'll see if we add that in or not. Maybe we'll just start here. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Yeah, like I said, the, the VOD will be up as soon as the episode is over. So. I know, but the audio might sound completely different. We'll see. I'll check it out, and we'll find out. Uh, yeah, but anyways, welcome to the Politically Incorrect Gaming Podcast. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We got started on time, so we could finish on time. We did everything time. right. We did everything right. We did right. everything right. So is this going to be an hour podcast, or is this going to be a 40-minute podcast? <laughs> uh, both. Yes. Depending if you hit the live stream or the audio. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, I like that. 
Oh, man. All right. So we were talking about Roth IRAs and finances and all that good stuff uh, because of the the recent crypto crashes. Uh, but the more research I've, I've been doing, there's been widespread crypto crashes across 2022. Yep. Uh, that just haven't been talked about or publicized as much as this FTX shit that's been going down recently. <laughs> well, I think that... For whatever reason, and I'm assuming it's because of his marketing abilities, is mm -hmm. why it's so widespread and so well talked about. Is there's yeah. so many there's so many institutions that were invested in this. Well, you know? and big names too, like yeah. Tom Brady was invested. Tom Brady's in an FTX commercial about investing in FTX. Yeah, so that's... if you haven't heard, if you only follow the gaming world and you don't follow the finance world and crypto world, uh, FTX was a large uh, trading, crypto trading exchange uh, that a bunch of people were invested. Kevin O'Leary, you know, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank. Yep. Uh, Tom Brady, uh, a bunch of other celebrities. Elon Musk uh, supposedly had some in there and was even meant to have a meeting with the CEO of FTX, Mr. Sam uh, Fudge Token himself. <laughs> uh yeah it's it's fucking nuts i mean so basically uh he created a company and he's really good at marketing he's really good at getting people to believe in him and people just kept investing more and more money and he kept promising you know the world to everyone you know the best uh decentralized bank and uh, ftx was one of the few uh as far as i understand it there, there, there's so many crypto coins and there's I mean everyone's heard of Bitcoin but there's so fucking many out there uh, if you listen to the live stream you would have heard the uh, portfolio Q has <laughs> or had I sold a lot of my I sold it all off yeah well and y you listed like five I've never even heard of oh yeah that, that was... that's how many are out there there's oh, literally there's you, thousands. you can make up you can just go to random name generator on Google and just type in coin after that, and there's probably a crypto coin for it. Yeah. Like, well, it, it was it was speculative investing that made yeah it made what they were doing in 1929 look like kids play. Yeah. You well, that, that's why I wanted to talk about it because there's so little understanding around crypto. Um, all, all I was saying was FTX is one of the few that was backing their cryptocurrency with actual like assets supposedly mm -hmm. now we don't even know if that's real or not uh while looking into their stuff which uh oh. so they had about they had about eight billion dollars on, on their uh exchange so people had invested in ftx in multiple different coins including their own coin ftt uh about eight billion dollars so that's that's all in their virtual bank and that all dissolved and pretty much went away over the last few days <laughs> so, so their I, ceo who's now lo no longer the ceo that's the other wild thing the ceo uh for ftx i think i i told you right so uh, uh according to the san francisco standard mm -hmm. um FTX investors, celebrity investors, included the likes of uh, Tom Brady, Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey. Um, what's really unfortunate, I know you'll get appreciate get a kick out of this. Uh, the Canadian Ontario Teachers Pension Plan. Oh uh, yeah, I saw that. They had like fifty million or uh, something. 90, in it. They invested ninety-five million dollars of their pensions in FTX, which is oh, yeah. pretty much worthless now. Uh, the firm was founded by Bay Area native Sam Bankman, Bankman Freed uh, in 2019 and based in the Bahamas. Um, let's see, Sequoia Capital, which is... Uh, High-profile investors are already writing off their entire investments. Sequoia, yeah. uh, Sequoia Capital, uh, who had invested over $200 million at valuations between $18 billion and $200... Excuse me, $25 billion dollars tweeted yesterday uh that their their fur or their um assets are now worthless yeah you know it's a huge loss eight billion dollars across you know multiple different people uh just gone 
Like, right. yeah. And now he, so I I looked into it because I saw trending on Twitter. Everyone was saying the SBF uh, was arrested. Sam Bankman freed or fried. I, I assume it's, it's freed. I, I assume it's freed. <coughs> oh, yeah. I, but I would say in the future he probably will get fried. Yeah. Sam Bankman fried. SBF is what everyone calls him, and that's what we're going to call him. I'm not saying his whole name. So SBF supposedly was arrested, and everyone's talking about, oh, he got arrested. He's getting extradited. But uh, I've done some more research, and he's not arrested. He's under watch. Uh, he's in the Bahamas right now. Oh, look, a non-extradition area, I'm assuming. Uh, no, Bahamas does actually cooperate. Uh, oh. Supposedly, he's looking to go to... Uh, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. The, a Middle Eastern country that doesn't extradite. Mm. So, uh, But he's under watch right now. So if he tries to leave, it's going to be an issue. So the but, way... No, charges haven't been brought against him yet. So. so I wanted to give you some more information. I don't know if you would, um, had seen this. So the initial investment that he raised from investors to create FTX was $8 million. Um, I wish I had $8 million. I could start a company to yeah. give me $8 yeah. million. <laughs> um, but over the course of different investment rounds, uh, just doing the, sh- doing the quick math, you were looking $1 billion, $2 billion, almost $2.5 billion of uh, investments were, were money that was put Initially? into it. No, this is over the course of the entire... That's their base investments over the one, two, three, four, five, six rounds of investments that he opened up. Mm. Basically, what he was doing is every so often, usually, judging if he opened in 2019, this was probably one, two, three, yeah, uh, probably every six months he would open up for more investments. Um, mm, yeah. Well, and he was such a good, the the term con man literally covers what he was such a good confidence man telling you and saying all these big words and getting you to just say, oh, yeah, I totally agree in this guy. You know, he had Kevin O'Leary on multiple interviews talking about if there's somebody you want to invest with, it's this guy. His two parents are freaking, what are they lawyers of? Basically, mm, I'm not I'm sure. Have to look it up. Uh, here's some back history on him. Uh, prior to the collapse, 30-year-old um, Bankman Freed, uh, was considered a wonder kid, a graduate of MIT who majored in physics. He was known for being committed to spending his entire fortune on philanthropy. He was a prominent donor to Joe Biden and paid three one hundred and thirty-five million for naming rights to a Miami Heat stadium. Uh, he yeah, ran. Well, as, that's one thing. He ran. He paid. Uh, you know TSM. Since we're a gaming podcast, we'll cover that. Right. TSM t- Team Solo Mid uh, FTX. I think it was two hundred and fifty million he paid to put FTX in the TSM name and take over TSM. It became FTX TSM. So I've got a list of all of his, uh, all of the FTX investors. Two hundred ten million. Sorry, I just looked it up. Uh, some of the names on this list, you know, finance nerds would would recognize. Uh, AGE Crypto was in on it. Uh, Allied Investors. Uh, Binance, uh, which is one of the crypto platforms that a lot of people use. Um, yeah, Binance is another big player. And that's um, where this downfall actually started. Binance was talking uh, a few weeks ago of they were going to take over FTX and actually buy and purchase everything. Uh, Coinbase Ventures, which is Coinbase, was the app that I was trading most of my crypto on at the time when I was. Uh, just looking through some of this. Uh, Tom Brady's wife, Giselle, Giselle, excuse me, uh, yeah, HOF I think Capital. Bet- <laughs> I joke. think between Tom Brady and his wife, they had like fifty million or something in it, something like that. Yeah, that's a tremendous amount. <laughs> uh, let's see, any other names that pop? Ontario Teachers Pension Pension Plan got in about a year ago. It looks like um, Samsung uh, Samsung Next Ventures. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of so yeah, the weird crazy. part too. They had they had a, about eight billion dollars in crypto on their exchange, but according to FTX uh, in their re- so recent b- bankruptcy filing, they actually had upwards of possibly fifty billion in assets, and, well, and liabilities and money they owe and everything. <laughs> so it's it's actually pretty big, pretty bad. Uh, yeah, this it, this cri- is a uh, this is a huge crash. And what's really yeah. what's really wild about the way crypto works 
Um, it works so similar to the stock market. Um, when one major thing happens in in the crypto world, it just causes it's a huge swing, yeah. and it's all made up fake numbers run by an algorithm. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's it's absolutely wild. Um, the you know the way it works because you know you would see like right now thanks to the the FTC um, or FTX, excuse me, you know everything that I had originally invested in a minimum of four and a half percent down. Uh, Shiba Inu is down ten percent over over the last week. Um, yeah, every every crypto coin, the whole crypto market is yeah. down like almost ten percent on average. It's, oh yeah, it's, it's it's everything's down because of this huge crash, which is crazy. There was another crash while I was researching for for this dude and the shit that he's done. There was another crash just back in May of forty five billion dollar crash. Uh, which I want to talk about that too. I, I want to talk about crypto as a whole because the weirdest part, okay, all, all the old heads, the ones that are actually running our government, don't <laughs> understand crypto and they're scared of it. Yeah. Well, they should be. Which, yeah, they should be. For multiple yeah. reasons. It's great it's, it's great for the investors and it's a great way for them to lose power and it's a great way for the American people to lose money. Well, and it's a really good scam. Uh, I was looking up, uh jake paul has scammed about almost 60 million dollars worth of running crypto schemes and nft schemes and getting all a bunch of people to invest there's one he did where they created these nfts where they were doing like nine thousand unique nfts that were based loosely based on like a pokemon system where there was like common rare legendaries and Mm -hmm. stuff and their whole promise, uh, which Jake Paul has a bunch of videos on Twitter and YouTube promoting, hey, if you get one of the legendary Pokemons, it'll literally pay you out of the economy of the system like two thousand twenty five hundred dollars a month. And so, you know, millions of people were throwing money at this, you know, trying to mint all these, you know, wannabe Pokemon cards, these virtual cards. And they got about six and a half million dollars, and then they all just dumped. And Jake Paul just doesn't talk about it. <laughs> well, he's a he's a scam artist anyway. Yeah, he's another scam artist. It's. I saw the funniest thing last night while we were playing Apex. Uh, Andrew Tate, who is a fucking scam <laughs> artist, piece of shit himself, but he was talking about SBF, and he made some good points. He's not a hundred percent right, but he made some good points. Uh, I don't even, I can't even, I don't know where he posted this video, but somehow it made its way to Twitter. He's banned on Twitter and Instagram and fucking everywhere. As he should be. He he recorded a video and he's talking about, you know, I don't trust that SBF motherfucker. You know why? Who, what kind of rich cocksucker, I'm giving, this is his words. (laughs) What kind of, what kind of rich cocksucker uh, doesn't show off his wealth? He's like, I'm not saying he has to have a car and a watch and a this and a that, but pick something, drive a nice car you know wear nice clothing have a cool watch something he's all i don't trust a motherfucker that looks at goes look i got this t-shirt at goodwill and i'm driving a honda corolla and like a toyota corolla like he's like i don't trust that motherfucker you're you're shady if you don't show your wealth at all and you're rolling in millions of dollars and you're pretending he's like that just screams shady to me there's something off with you if you refuse to show any of it and i was like you're making some good points but also there are some billionaires and millionaires that just don't want to like <laughs> they don't want to f- flaunt their wealth so uh, yeah uh, FTX has officially filed for bankruptcy yeah uh, they did a few days ago yep. and then after Binance said that they decided not to acquire FTX yep uh, let's see uh, FTX files for this is according to Reuters FTX filed for bankruptcy on Friday one of the highest profile crypto blowups after traders rushed to withdraw six billion dollars from the platform in just seventy-two hours, yeah. Uh, well, it, it, Jesus Christ! They they didn't pull it out. Well, they pulled some out, but then they froze. You could no longer pull money out. And then this is where it gets wild too. Then all of a sudden, even though everything was froze, the apps, the website, trading trading was frozen. Uh, about six hundred million dollars worth of stuff that was still on there all of a sudden got shifted to one account so and this is one thing that's wild about the way cryptocurrency works it's decentralized it's not regulated you know it's not they technically don't have to follow like american laws or the sec or the fcc or any of that crap but almost every 
transaction you do on it can be traced and is available on the web. That's part of the like safety, like that's, that's their safety net that, you know, it's decentralized. It's not regulated, but you know, transactions can be seen whether you know who the account owner is or not. Uh, but yeah, about $600 million of FTX currency was transferred into one account, which a lot of people are saying is SPF, but there's no proof. And a bunch of people diving into it actually discovered that there's a backdoor built into the FTX system that allows something like this to happen. Yeah. Um, and it won't it won't throw red flags or freeze the trading or anything. It's built into it. And uh, some engineers, you know, that now no longer work there because the company's basically dissolved are saying that SPF made it and other people are saying, no, it's somebody else. But all we know is it's somebody inside, whether it's Sam or not, somebody stole $600 million. <laughs> <laughs> so according to Reuters again, uh, the turmoil at FTX has seen at least one billion of the customers' funds vanish from the platform. Sources told Reuters on Friday, uh, SBF has transferred transferred ten billion dollars of the customer funds to his trading company Alameda Research. Uh, new problems emerged on Saturday when FTX's U.S. General Counsel Ryan Miller uh, said in a Twitter post that the firm's digital assets were being moved into a so-called quote cold storage to mitigate damage upon observing unauthorized transactions. Cold storage yeah. cold storage refers to crypto wallets that are not connected to the internet to guard against hackers. That sounds like a big old fat load of bullshit that they're just going to up and take the account money and say, nah bro, we're just gonna we're just gonna hang we're on to it for it. you. We, we just we're saving it. it. Just hold the it. other crazy, the crazy part is like all of this has brought so much attention to the crypto market that a bunch of people have been looking into. Because, like I said, transactions are you know available for the most part to just see online, and uh, there's been kind of a little conspiracy that's been discovered across other large trading companies like FTX. It looks like these companies are shifting. Uh, huge amounts of bitcoin and stuff around like literally mm -hmm. tens and hundreds of millions of dollars around to each other so that then they can do their little uh their little you know checks with their investors and everything and go look at all this cryptocurrency that we own right and you know take all these screenshot grabs with all this money sitting in their account and then shifting it over to their buddy that runs a different exchange so that he can do the same thing when really none of them have all this money or assets available grossly over inflating the value of their of their initial investment and that's mm -hmm. why they do it is they can say oh man here's a hundred million here and oh look here's a hundred million here and a hundred million here and a hundred million there next yeah, thing you know all this money yeah next thing you know you've created a, a billion dollars of of you know value to this hundred hundred million dollar but the problem of it is and is what's happened here is that uh, people had, you know, given money based on being able to withdraw a portion of that billion dollars, and yeah. now everybody's wanting to withdraw their hundred million, and there's only one hundred million bit uh, uh, coins out there to trade, and that's a big problem. And no, uh, yeah, that's why, like, that's why some of the good ones that are in the government, and a lot of the bad ones, that's why they're so against crypto. Because they go, oh, it's not safe, it's not this, it's not that. It's like, yeah. But again, it's so much like the stock market. The stock market is also fake. And you can just not trade it. You can just pull a GameStop and just not pay out and not trade it and just shut it down because you don't want to be on the hook for it. You guys did the same thing fucking a year ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah GameStop, GameStop survived. I mean, the Internet bailed <laughs> GameStop out of bankruptcy during, uh, during COVID. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was them. Well, and then, and then Wall Street ripped off, you know, millions of americans by robin hood and other yep. trading companies just shutting it down and go nah we're not going to let that collapse and be on the hook for you know millions of dollars yeah and it was yeah it, it, robin hood got in a bunch of trouble for it um the the, the their ability to say oh we don't you know we're going to give you access to trade stocks or what have you and then when shit hits the fans 
you know, they halt trading on the platform. So the, you know, to, to keep that keep that entity from going out of business. Yeah. Which is completely illegal and against all kinds of SEC rules and all this shit. And it just, all that did was show all us little guys that we're, we can play the game, but as long as we play by your rules, you're going to, in the middle of the game, change the rules and go, no, 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 no. I meant, I meant eight of diamonds are wild, the ones that I have, not the eight that you have. That's not wild. Right. So we're, we're playing a game of cards with liars and cheats that'll just shift the rules so that they continue winning. Yeah, and that's and that's a that's a huge problem, and it's also, it's, crypto is the hugest, most biggest. You know, we use some Trump words. You know, some hugely big. You just most biggest. Yeah, high risk, <laughs> high reward. You know, you yeah. can get in there and you can make a lot of money. You can, um, you know, really do well trading in crypto, but you mm-hmm. can also, for literally no reason whatsoever. Uh, you know, reasons like Elon Musk dressing up as Wario on Saturday Night Live um, cause the entire market to crash, which is exactly yeah. what happened. That, you know, uh, was I was watching Saturday Night Live and I was trading in Dogecoin uh, during that time when, you know, when Elon Musk was heavily invested in it and heavily involved in its, you know, whatever, administration essentially. And in the lead up to the SNL, you know, that coin went from less than 20 cents a coin to 74 cents. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's tripling its value. You know, you you don't see that anywhere. You don't see a 300%. You don't get that on the stock market. Other than when the GameStop thing happened, you don't get that kind of. Yeah. I mean, even then, even then the GameStop, uh, you know, pump and dump didn't, didn't hit those numbers that quickly. It usually took you know, a few days to hit those kinds of numbers. This happened in a matter of a couple of hours. You know, the, the coin just, you know, I remember sitting there and refreshing, you know, watching the coin go up and up and up. And every five cents, I was buying more. You know, and I was, you know, another $10, another $100, another $75, maxed out a credit card, you know, and, and ran it all the way up. And then uh, I had my, you know, I had my stuff set to sell off three quarters of my, uh, investments at 72 cents and so when it, when it hit 72 cents I sold an initial an initial value of probably two hundred dollars just just yeah. in doge that day mind you um, I walked away with almost seven hundred dollars of uh, of profits just in just in that one day and you know I was I got lucky because it hit 74 and then it tanked and it's currently yeah. trading at less than eight cents. Well, I think it's less than nine cents a coin today. Yeah, it dropped way down. Yeah, and it's never going to recover from that. Uh, no, it's never going to go way up. It's it's literally a gamble. It's literally a, a. It's another version of the stock market, and the reason, you know, the uh, trading New at, York Stock Exchange and IRS. The reason they don't like it is because they can't regulate and they aren't sure how to make money off of it, like they do with the stock market. It's currently trading at. Point zero eight one three eight two cents. So it's trading at just a freckle over eight cents of uh, a token. You know, which you know when you're talking about you know eight cents or seventy five cents and stuff like that, it doesn't sound like that much. But you know, when you've got yeah, people, but if you have big money, if you got a big million money. to throw on it and it goes up one cent, that's a lot of money. That's a thousand dollars that you just you put in your pocket. You know, and Which all is, it is, you know, it's, a it's just another, it's just another penny stock. It's the same thing. It's just, yeah. Like I said, it's a, it's another stock market that's not controlled by the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> right. It's the same exact thing, though. You're playing the same game with different players. Yeah. The only difference in crypto game is it's literally worldwide, and as of right now, there's no regulation. And when stuff like this crash happens, almost nobody goes to jail. Right. It just happens, and then they walk away. It's not like Wolf of Wall Street when they, those fucking guys. It's not like the the big well the big squeeze. They kind of took advantage. They didn't go to jail. That wasn't their fault, but they just made money off of it. Right. Well, yeah, and that's a uh, lot. It is. It's huge trading throughout the world. And one of the other issues that a lot of people have with crypto is it's twenty four hour trading. Like oh it, yeah, it never turns off for it, holidays it, or weekends. Yeah. Or, and it just keeps going. So. You know, you have and to constantly technically, stay on it. Technically, 
I guess it depends on how you look at it. Technically, crypto is way more volatile than the actual stock market. Oh, incredibly. It's incredibly volatile because, like I said, you know... Like you said with Dogecoin, it, in an hour, it can go crazy. Whereas on the stock market, yeah, in like a month or a year, you might see crazy numbers like that, but never... And even if you do, one. even if you do have crazy numbers on the stock market, the SEC has rules in place that if you know a stock, if there's a run on a stock and the stock is just tanking, to, if it tanks 25 percent over uh, two hours, you know they they freeze trading on it. You know they, yeah. they 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 process all the trades going up to that two hour mark and then they wait, you know, to kind of slow the hemorrhaging. There's rules in place to to help businesses, which you know, in my opinion, in some cases, you know that that those types of things shouldn't be there because it screws the investors, but there's nothing stopping it. And, and it just, no. it works on a whim. You know, you could, uh, during Dogecoin's, you know, popularity and whatnot, um, every time Elon Musk would just well, make yeah, every a time joke, he tweeted, you know, well, any, every time he tweeted anything, even if it wasn't about Dogecoin, right. you'd see the number rise or drop. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was immediately as soon as he would tweet, you know, especially if he, he he said something about Dogecoin. You know, when he was when he was tweeting the memes about you know uh, the the monkey from uh, King uh, the Lion King holding up a Shiba Inu in place of Simba. When he tweeted that meme, there was a fifteen percent jump in crypto like that, and it and it rippled. Well, that was the coolest thing was it rippled across the entire markets. You know, you would see a ten percent jump in Doge. You'd see a ten percent jump in you know, Bitcoin and, and Ethereum, you know, yeah. it was wild how it worked. No. And I mean, and you, if you were following it really closely and, and you paid a lot of attention to the way the system worked, you learned that there was tons of computers and there are tons of computers running constant algorithms and they're all working in sync with each other. You know, it's not just an investor going, oh man, Doge went up. I need to buy some Dogecoin. I need to buy some Ethereum. I need to buy all these things. No, it was a computer going, oh, this is a popular coin right now. Uh, if it's going to go up, other people are going to see other things. So I'm going to I'm going to drive the cost of you know Bitcoin yeah. or Ethereum up just to make you know my investment better you know and make more money off of it. It was a scam. It is a scam. No. It's a great scam. Well, uh, that's that's literally how the crash of the Terra the uh, the UST coin uh, crashed back in May, uh, which was a $45 billion crash. Uh, yeah, because it, it was a one-to-one -one token, wasn't it? No. It, I looked it up. It's kind of weird. Okay. So the, the UST coin, when they created it, and Do Kwon, uh, who I was just looking at his tweets. He's still on Twitter. He hasn't been hiding like SBF. Uh, he was tweeting, hey, I'm tired of all these people. <laughs> saying that I'm hiding, I'll be glad to do a live stream. I'm not going to tell you my location, but I'll do a live stream and answer any questions from any authority or anyone that wants anything. Uh, he, he's a real kind of a dickhead, this Do Kwon guy that cost $45 billion worth of investments to just disappear. Uh, so what he did, he created a stable coin. And so unlike FTX, where they had, you know, actual assets, you know, quote unquote, uh, the way their stable coin would work, it ran an algorithm and it had two coins that kind of coincided together. Mm -hmm. So it had the the uh, the UST coin and then it had Luna. And so the UST coin was supposed to always be trading at a dollar. Right, the it, one to it, one. It, it was, yeah, it was supposed to be one to one, stay at a dollar. And the way that would work is backed by Luna. And so as you know, the markets went up and down and crypto market, the stock market, as everything went up and down, Luna would alternate where it was trading at and the system you know had an algorithm running that would automatically create more luna when it needed to to make up that difference so that when you traded uh you know your ust across to luna you'd be getting the same value as ust equaling a dollar it would do everything in its power the algorithm would do everything in its power to keep ust at a dollar now the problem which supposedly many people told do Kwan, when he created this, uh, this is a big problem. What if a bunch of people get scared or the market dips or something and a bunch of people sell all at once? Your algorithm is going to go nuts. It's going to create all kinds of Luna coin and it's going to try and attempt to stabilize the other coin and it's actually going to go into a death spiral and crash both of them. And he kept saying, no, 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 no. We have, uh, we have 500 million in, you know, 
you know, actual U.S. dollar to back it, and we have one and a half billion in other cryptos that we'll literally dump and convert into Luna to to cover it. Like, oh, wow. so they were they I just looked so up they what Luna's value was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. I think it peaked at like one hundred and twenty dollars or something. One hundred and sixteen thirty-eight. Yeah, around there, and then it dumped. I think it's almost at zero now. I think it's yeah. less than Dogecoin. It's trading at one one hundredth of a penny. No, excuse me. Yeah. One, let's see, ten hundred thousand, one ten thousandth of a penny. Yeah. So yeah. this thing that he warned about, and he kept saying, no, 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 we have about $2 billion to cushion uh, if something like that happens. So what happened, and he's being investigated right now, because a few, do- a few days before the crash happened, he completely liquidated and, you know, shuttered his company. And it was a few days before the crash, and that's really suspicious. You can't do it. <laughs> like, so a lot of people are saying he knew what was going on. But so basically that's exactly what happened. Uh, something happened. The algorithm wasn't keeping up, and the UST coin dropped to $0.98. Cents. It dropped out of its dollar st- stability that it had been riding on for a long time. And people started to panic, and that panic caused it to drop to $0.95, cents, $0.92, cents, $0.85, cents, and it just kept going. And the algorithm kept trying to catch up, and they saw that what was happening, and they tried to dump you know, that $2 billion worth of assets they had at it, and it did nothing. <laughs> it did nothing. It just kept crashing. And as the UST kept coming down and down, the algorithm kept creating more and more Luna, which actually drove the price of Luna down as well. And it literally crashed both of their coins that relied on each other. And their $45 billion of market uh, cap that they had just disappeared overnight. Now both coins are literally worth nothing. Yeah. They're both gone. Well, that was uh, when I got into when I got into doing crypto, um, I was using Coinbase, which is the app I was telling you about. Was the yeah. uh, was the app that I traded in the most because it had a huge selection of um, crypto, and at the time they had this um, uh, they had this program that it was basically like crypto education. And oh yeah, I I had their stuff. You like watch a three minute yeah. video and it'd give you it'd give you like three free coins or it, it gave you, you three dollars worth three dollars worth yeah. of that coin, um, and it was great. I mean, I learned a lot about it, and <laughs> every week. You know, I was watching that three-minute video, you know, getting all kinds of stuff. And, I, and like I said, I did really well in some of it. But the way that um, the way the app was set up, and this is for the listeners, um, when, you would, when you would invest your money into Coinbase to begin your transactions, they gave you uh, U.S. tokens as, you know, a replacement. You know, you were converting your dollars into digital dollars that you would then begin to trade on their market. So, you know, the fact that, you know, we're sitting here talking about that's why I got was so shocked when I looked at the Luna value, you know, is now, you know, near zero when it was used as a collateral, kind of like what we were doing on the um, when we had when we had gold backing the U.S. dollar. Yeah, um, back when we did yeah. no longer. <laughs> right. It was, it was essentially the same thing. So if you know a little bit about that, um, the gold standard for the U.S. dollar, um, Luna was the. Luna standard for the U.S. token. So watching, you know, seeing that, you know, that's just mind-boggling because I held Luna for a while just because it was stable. You yeah, know? well, it, w- it was supposed to be a stable coin. They were supposed right. to, the UST and the L- Luna would support each other and they both be stable. And literally, they had tons of companies investing in it, even more than FTX, actually. They were fucking nuts. FTX just has more celebrity names behind it. Uh, uh, the Terra company had more actual businesses and investors in it. Uh, but it's not to just see that, you know, uh, and the whole thing, we're all in pursuit of, well, I guess it depends who you ask. He still claims that he's still in pursuit of a decentralized, you know, worldwide currency that we can all use and it'll be stable and it won't be as volatile. And it doesn't matter if Trump gets elected, it won't crash what our currency's worth, you know. That, that's the whole point of crypto. It's supposed to be an international currency that we can all use and accept. Uh, but there's a lot of problems. And I saw this interview about four and a half years ago of Warren Buffett talking about crypto. And he said, the only problem I see with it is there's no value. But even then, even more troublesome than that is it seems like it's just a way for 
uh, bad people and con artists to take advantage of people that are trying to get rich quick. Right. Right. And I mean, it is a, it is a more severe example of what the stock market is because Mm -hmm. the stock market is still, is the exact same. It's just as speculative. Yes. The same. It it just takes what it takes 10 years for them to do big plays or sometimes two years or, uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of fucking nuts when you look at the stock market. And right. The best way to play, which has been proven time and time again, is to play like Warren Buffett. Put some money in. Just leave it. Don't worry about it for 50, 60 years. It must be nice to have that ability, though. Yeah, it'd be nice if yeah. I never had to worry about bills or money or the economy crashing because rich people are, you know, tanking what our dollar's worth and hoarding all the money and making <laughs> less available on the market and then some more is created and then inflation gets worse and then yep. inflation isn't even as bad as they say it is, so they decide to price gouge and actually make the inflation worse. <laughs> yeah, and it's not even it's not even real inflation and that's the problem. You yeah, know, there's it, a tiny bit of inflation, but it's been inflated beyond inflation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we now have to let as much as I hate to say it, you know, now because we won't use socialism, um, we have to let capitalism now run its course. And once the, you know, once that inflation gets under control, which it has come down considerably, it's come down two and a half points uh, over the course of the last year, which is yeah. great, which is wonderful. We're back to... Yeah, once it, the greed comes down. Yeah, but the issue of it is, is now now the inflation level is coming back down now we have to let the competition come back down, you know, because everybody, the inflation priced the majority of people out of doing things like going out to eat because mm. you, know, you would see the price of food and, and, and things like that go through the roof. You know, a lot of it is price gouging and not necessarily on the on the end user side, not the Applebee's or, you know, wherever. And sometimes it's way further up the line yeah. with their suppliers yeah. or right. distributors. or Yeah, it's, it's further up the line that's causing the problems. And now you have, you know, once inflation gets under control, you're going to start seeing these businesses try to undercut each other again and drive mm-hmm. the costs back down where we'll get inflation back down to, you know, probably four and a half percent before uh, before the next incoming <clears throat> election. We'll easily be back down to five to five and a half percent by this time next year, hopefully. Yeah. It, it, it would help if uh, monopolies weren't allowed to run rampant and... Yeah, well, the, the 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 cure for that is to stop the monopolies from being able to invest in the government. Yeah, that's the that's the problem. Or anyone that works in government, you know, can't buy stocks, can't invest, can't. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't believe I'm, we've talked about this several times. Can't believe Martha Stewart's in trouble, but fucking, you know, Nancy Pelosi is Taylor. To... Taylor Green's not Nancy yeah. Pelosi. Uh, uh, yeah. Hundreds of them. Hundreds, hundreds. <laughs> it's not even the big ones, you know. It's not just the, uh, the 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 Nancy Pelosi's or the Mitch McConnell's or the Rand Pauls or or the Chuck yeah. Schumer's. It's the, you know, all the way up and down the line, you know. It's the small time representative from an itty bitty district in Nebraska. Yeah. You know? Well, he's still getting the insider info and trading on what you know. Yeah. Just the way Martha Stewart got. Yeah, every trouble. every yeah. as soon as you become a public official. As soon as you hold a public office that's at least state level, um, you should... Even if you don't do it on purpose at first, you're going to hear some information and you're going to well, act on it because my, my you're a human. Solution, my solution is simple. And once you once you take over that state office, you, mm. all of your assets, your IRAs, your everything, turned over to a blind trust. That's it. Yeah, you can't you can't act on it or trade or move anything. You can't act. You can't trade. You don't get to know nothing. You mean you don't mean for the length of your term in office, for however long it is, you don't you don't know anything about what's going on with your investments. Not a damn nothing. And then once you leave office, the day you leave office, that blind trust is turned back over to you as an individual, and then you get to see what happened. That's the only solution. The only the only It'd be hard to regulate. It, it should literally, all your accounts have to be frozen and they're monitored. If anything, if there's any trades or anything going on in your account, whether you can prove that you did it or some other company did it, all your, once you're a government official, that has to be one of your things when you sign on. Yeah. All my accounts will be frozen and whatever I gain here in two, three years, 
that's just what I gain. I can't trade, can't sell, can't buy anything. Exactly. All your stuff's frozen. Or even if it, like I said, you know, you can turn it over to a blind trust where, uh, you know, a lot of well, different... I, I can't even trust that, though, because they could just call them and say... Well, no, you know, uh, what happens is, is you know, a true blind trust, and they do exist. I know um, Edward Jones, my, my investment company, deals in them, is you turn your... What you do is you turn over your portfolio to them. They strip all of your identifying information out of it. You know, it's no longer my name or anything. It's just account number 77. And then it's turned yeah. over to another company, and they handle it. So your company has nothing to do with it. It's just given to them, oh, this is just an Edward Jones account. That's all we know about it. It's just a, an account that they have that has money in it, and their expectation is... Whatever you know, whatever whatever your expectations are going in, whether you want, you know, two point five percent growth while you're in a nice steady, you know, safe investments, or you're like fuck it, let's swing for the fences. I want eleven percent, you know, and then they do their best to to handle that, and then uh, once you're ready to get your account back, you go back to Edward Jones. You say, hey, I want my account back. Here's my account information. Then they take that, pass it over to the other accountant or the other firm and they transfer that money back and you're given access to it over i think it's 72 hours it's, it's usually yeah. like a week but if, if they could prove yeah. it's done right yeah. I, I just don't trust any politician i'd i'd assume they're going to find some back door somewhere no, you're still. not yeah, you're not wrong in that respect but yeah, that's yeah. why I don't trust that because I thought at first when you said it, I was like, that's a good idea. But then I immediately remembered, oh, well, they can just start some company that, oh, this company does blind. And literally you look, though, and they own the company through like 19 different umbrella companies through like a long list of hidden, you know, unfortunately, it happens all the time. <laughs> well, it it very well could. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to. Um... Yeah, but even that would still be better. It, it's still it, it'd still be harder they shouldn't just be able to get on their phone and make a trade in the middle of the night uh, yeah. because they heard something. They got a phone call. That, hey, this is happening. Oh, shit. All well, right. it's all and done just, on the honor system. That's that's yeah. what blows my mind is that they're they're saying, well, don't do this. And you're like, oh, yeah, I totally won't do that then because that's corruption. That's Why yeah. would I want to do that? And then, you know. The, cra the craziest part of, like, the way uh, what you were just talking about, all the blind, it reminded me of the – so the one crypto guy that's in jail right now, that actually got arrested. All these other guys, Sam and Doquan and all these that have caused, you know, a combined like hundred billion dollars worth of just lost assets to, you know, everyone from rich people down to the me's and you's. None of them are in jail. You right. wanna know the one guy that is in jail? The guy that created a little thing called Tornado Cash. And I don't know if you've heard of Tornado Cash. No, I haven't heard of that one. So basically I'll Tornado Google Cash it while you explain it. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a decentralized cryptocurrency. They call it a tumbler or a mixer. So it basically takes transactions on the blockchain. Because again, like we were talking earlier, all every transaction on the blockchain is available on the blockchain. You can look it up and view it and everything. Uh, what this thing does is it kind of mixes it all together. And so you can still see transactions, but you can now no longer see what transactions are connected. Uh, so let's say like let's say oh. you know me let's let's say me Sorry, and you <laughs> let's say me and you and chris and mrs Moki. uh let's say we like all go to the bank we all deposit you know a combined million dollars and then later uh one of us you know takes out half a million dollars Tornado Cash completely mixes up all those transactions and kind of hides them all. So now we don't know which one of us deposited how much, and we don't know which one of us withdrew and how much it was. Uh, it kind of like it, it, it basically adds privacy to even though the transactions can be seen on the blockchain, it adds a privacy of you don't know exactly how much or who or anything. And the IRS and the government and the SEC do not like Tornado Cash. They don't like that it adds that... Uh, anonymity I'll, I'll give and you they this. Are, they arrested the guy that developed it and they've completely like blacklisted and said you cannot use this if you use this we will investigate you and like <laughs> so i immediately like i said i wasn't familiar so I, you know i did when any good human or good millennial did went straight to google um yeah. this is according to lawfareblog.com 
uh, Americans are now forbidden from using Tornado Cash. According to the U.S. government, Tornado Cash was sanctioned because it allegedly laundered over $7 billion in cryptocurrency, $455 million of which was stolen by a North Korean state-sponsored hacking group. Yeah, well, I, I looked into it. Tornado Cash, to date, the total amount of transactions they covered is $7 billion. So they're just claiming that every single transaction they've done was laundered, which there's no way. There's got to be some that were legitimate. But let's give them that. Let's say every single one was laundered. That's still, that was the point of why he created it, uh, to have anonymity. If people are going to be doing illegal shit, they're going to be doing illegal shit. <laughs> yeah. And he's the one that got in trouble by allowing them to do it anonymously but all these people that have straight up in broad daylight scratched my cd you know in broad daylight sam stole you know millions supposedly hundreds of millions of dollars uh, of you know customers funds no he has it in storage to protect it from hackers oh now you know sitting here thinking about it it's actually pretty ingenious what he did because Let's Ooh, Sam. Yeah, because let let's say um, let's say hypothetically he is doing the good. All right, mm-hmm. he's doing this completely for the good of the currency and the investors. He takes that that money that he's that he's pulled out and he puts it anywhere. Let's say let's say he puts it in an IRA, a Roth IRA, because it's all post tax. <laughs> yeah. And then at the end of the day, you know, he's like, oh, okay. Um, FTX is stable again. You know everything's going to be fine. Uh, we can resume trading. Here's all of your money. Here's all back, protected. You didn't lose a dime. Now what's he going to do? He's going to keep the interest. Mm-hmm. What's the interest? Well, Let's that, do five and a half percent growth on uh, eight, billion eight, dollars? Eight, mil- eight billion dollars. Billion yeah, dollars. A lot. A lot. Yeah. Well, uh, that's one uh, theory right now that a lot of people, especially people that are still supporters of Sam, are saying uh, he can't be arrested. If you arrest him, there's no chance any of those investors get their money back. If you let him do his thing, you know, uh, supposedly that's what he's doing in the Bahamas right now. Other than uh, people on the Internet track his activity, and I guess he was playing League of Legends last night for about six hours. So... You know, I don't know if he's searching for investors or trying to get that money back while he's playing Lee, but <laughs> <laughs> supposedly that's what he's doing over there. He's doing the best he can. That was one of his last tweets in his 22 long tweet apology about FTX having to file bankruptcy. Is he was going to do everything in his power to get the money back and get, you know, people that have invested with him get their money uh, back and available to them. So supposedly that's what he's doing right now. So you might be right. Maybe he is the good guy, or maybe he's just in a sex orgy with people that. Well, I mean, like uh, even if he like is, anif- or addicted to amphetamines. Even if he is the good guy in this situation, like I said, even if he's the good guy, he's still the bad guy because mm-hmm. he's going to. Well, he's he, still going to keep all that money. Yeah, he's going to keep all the money because well, I mean, that's, his account. That's how all these. That's how all these crypto. I know a lot of people are like. Well, I don't get how does it make money. Uh, all the other thing that was so crazy about the Terra, the UST, and everything. Not only was, were they saying it was stable at $1, for the first like year and a half, they were live. The reason they grew so much, they were playing, they were paying out a, fat, a flat 20% mm-hmm. uh, payout on a, any money you put in, flat 20% back. Yep. And so it boomed their growth, and it, but it was just eventually going to catch up with them, and they kept you know, trying to get more and well, more investments to cover that cost. It, it, like, it, made, it also made sense up front, because if you had a coin backing it like Luna that was skyrocketing in price, like you said, I mean, it was running up to a hundred and some dollars a coin. Okay, well, yeah. that, that, that hundred dollar coin represented a one dollar coin, so you had a ninety-nine dollar difference in, in value. You had to do something with that value, if you didn't, it was by its very nature was going to push the UST up. So yeah. by taking that ninety nine dollar difference and spreading it out to all of the different investors, saying here's twenty percent for you, here's twenty percent for you, it's the I mean it was the only way that they could keep you know yeah. the UST uh, you know. I from, guess they were also rising. paying incentives when one when one would be in in balance, they would pay you incentives to trade into the other one. Right. 
So they were giving incentives for their users to also help the algorithm along the way so they weren't just, you know, willy-nilly creating Luna coins. Right. They tried to balance it first by users trading. Here's an incentive, get extra percentage by trading. You know, it 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 sounded smart, but it just didn't have enough security to back it and we can now see that because it's completely crashed. But Well, it also <laughs> it also didn't take into a, it take into consideration what would happen if there was a run on the coin, which is what happened with Luna. So now you've taken, you know, you've taken that hundred dollars worth of value, and you've sold it all off and and gotten rid of it to 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 maintain the stability of the other one. So now you have all these people that are holding a hundred dollar coin, and everybody wants the hundred dollars back. There's yeah. there's there's no well, the ninety nine dollars is gone. You're, you're he just completely he completely ignored human nature of a, a trader panic yeah. selling Pan- stooping. I'm out. Yeah. Every single one. I don't care if you're Kevin O'Leary. I don't care if you're Mark Cuban. You're a billionaire. It, it starts to crash. You're fucking out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, well, it's just it's just good nature because you know it's the the issue with the stock market and, and trading in general and crypto whatever is the the true fear of missing out, the FOMO, because mm-hmm. you know you have people buying in, buying in, buying in as it's going up and up and up and up, and then all of a sudden, one guy yells fire and there's a stampede out the door. Yep, and, and people get trampled on the way out, and they're yeah. the losers. And a they're, few they're, people win big, and a lot of people lose. Yeah, and the people that are getting trampled are usually the little guys, because they don't, you know, they're not connected, they're not following it, they have real lives, you know. I mean, there there was a time when all of us at my office were, were was playing in crypto, and that's all we did. I mean, it was just like you know, come the end of the week, well, what we do? Oh, I made like a hundred bucks this week. How'd you do? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I mean, I did great, but can I get paid? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I crypto's hard. I don't know if I'll ever get into it. I definitely want to get back into trading on uh, stocks. I don't know if I'll get back into doing day trading or swing trading. Uh, it was kind of fun, but also like uh, I would do it differently. I would one. I would number one not pay attention to it. I would set my numbers and just leave it. I'm you not going to look at it, you and I'm to. also not going to research it because it's a waste of time. <laughs> like the like the two examples I sh- gave you that happened on the same day. That literally changed my entire outlook on like why have I been researching? What what's the fucking point? It yeah. it just does what it wants to. You can't predict the market, which every single good investor from Warren Buffett down to your uncle fucking Ted has said you can't predict the market. You can. Well, there was <laughs> a so when I was when I was trading, I did a lot of dollar stocks and you know stuff like that because they were easy, cheap to get into. You know, if you lost yeah. if you lost ten percent, you were out you know, next to nothing, you know, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And there was one particular, um, one particular, um, um, dollar trading, uh, company called Sundial Technologies. And Mm. what I loved about it is they, they created, um, they built shipping, uh, cargo ships, you know, the actual big container ships. That's what they, um, that's what they did. And so, you know, I got really big into following container ships and, and understanding how, they, okay, if this port, you know, is backed up, it's going to do all this in the shipping and the supply chain, which is going to fuck the market, and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, Suez Canal, uh-huh. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, and uh, there was an issue with one of their boats, and this is not connected to the Evergreen boats that ran aground here in Virginia and the other one elsewhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> this this was another one that the, basically the same thing happened, but it was in a lot worse situation. Um, this happened somewhere in uh, I think it was the uh, uh, the Persian Gulf, somewhere over there. One of one of Sundial ships um, struck a sandbar, and the damage to the ship it sank, causing oh, billions of dollars in damages. So yeah. my mind, like, oh my god. I need to sell. Their stock's going to tank? Their stock's going to tank. So I yeah. immediately sold. It dipped like 2%, and I'm like, I'm out. I'm you know, I'm not taking the chance. I'm out. And uh, it dipped down to like the 3% range. And then another thing was like came out like, oh, uh, all of these new investors are coming in because they want to be in on building this new ship, and there's this other ship that's going to go with it. And just because this ship sank, they got out there and basically was able to market building a new ship to their investors 
And it, yeah, and, so they sank it on purpose. Conspiracy yeah, theory. Could be. <laughs> because it jumped up. You know, it was trading at like a dollar. It dipped down to like 80 cents. And then it jumped up to like 250, which is huge. Yeah. Man, it's a 150% swing. It's huge. Um, but you just, you just don't know. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, you don't know. Yeah. I'm not so, going to research so anymore. Hard. Well, yeah, I, the only research I do, I'm going to go back to my, the way I was researching. I would basically look for volatile stocks mm-hmm. that would go up and down a lot within like a week, a week's time. I want the fast ones. At least this is how I was trading. Cause I was doing swing trading. Cause it's the first thing I learned again from maniac, a halo pro. And why <laughs> can't I trust a halo pro? Yeah. Why not? Right. <laughs> uh, uh, he, he, the funny thing is too, like he got me into it, but then I looked into it and he's one of those gurus that he's charging like $200 for him to teach you his course. I'm like, come on, bro. I'm not, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. You're one of the, I hate fucking YouTube gurus, man. They're my fucking, it's now trading at $2 uh, and 60 cents. Sundial. Yeah. I think that was one of the ones I was looking at just cause it seemed rather volatile. It I want huge, ones that, hugely volatile. I want ones that jump up 10% like b- between its bottom and top. And I, I, I'm going to have to figure out how I did it again. I had a way of looking on Weeble and finding uh, all the time. I was finding all these stocks and then I track them on uh, a spreadsheet. I had even ones I never traded and I was right. Like a lot. <laughs> I mean, the only ones I was ever really wrong on were the ones I got emotionally invested in or researched too much and went, oh, the bankruptcy one's going to go down and the one with the trademark's going to go up. I was wrong on both of those. I should have just looked at the numbers and the patterns. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah I might I might get back into it, though, but I'm definitely, I don't think I'll ever do crypto. It's too... I think the, the problem with it, even if even if there are good ones out there, there's a lot of shitty scams and shit out there, and well, it's just too hard to tell which one's which. Even if you find a good, pure, clean cryptocurrency that is free from any corruption, mm-hmm. it's still going to be connected to the volatility of the market itself. Like you can yeah. take every. I mean, you can. Like I was just looking at it um, on. Um, let me pull it up. Well, Ethereum is one of the. Like I really. The dude behind Ethereum, super smart. I really trust that he is trying to create one of the best, you know, uh, international currencies. The way Ethereum and Ethereum 2 is going to work with smart contracts and, like, all that stuff is super smart. I truly trust it, and I really believe in it. And I told my wife, like, a long time ago when that shit was, like, $200, I was like, we should probably invest in Ethereum. And then we just didn't. I just – even him, as much as I trusted him in Ethereum – I was like, nah, and now it's at over like, what is Ethereum now? Twenty three hundred a piece or some shit. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's twelve hundred right now. Yeah. But see, I, then, I follow the Ethereum Classic. I don't follow the the newer Ethereum. But yeah. like I said, it, it's still. I mean, you can if you go on any any crypto website right now, and you pull up, you just pick fifty, fifty different mm-hmm. uh, uh, cryptos. Just randomly, you just signed all of the num- all of the cryptos a number, and you just randomly pick fifty of them, and you lay their graphs out over top of each other. They're almost all identical. Yeah. So like, across it, the days and everything. Yeah, the, across the, the yeah. markets is kind of following. The, the market, are they all following like the big one? Or are they all following Bitcoin or something? They, they're all, they they're all following the internet. That's the only mm. way I can describe it. Is I, I guess you're right because the crypto is so internet and everyone's trading and buying at the same time and they yeah. get on their well, discords the, and their Reddit and they go trade now buy now right and there's there's so many and so many people have built computer algorithms to trade in their currencies for them that you know yeah. you know one might be watching Bitcoin and then this one might be watching that one and they're all watching different ones but they're essentially all watching each other so when one moves they all move. So it's like you can pick, just you can pick one. It is you know pick whichever currency makes you know tickles your fancy, and then you know watch it over the course of a month, over six months, and you're going to see which every single one you pick is just going to follow all of them. They all track in the same directions. You know, the, yeah. It, so it, it might doesn't be, really matter which one you do. No, it really doesn't. <laughs> I mean, you know, what, this one might be down ten percent. This one might be down nine percent. This might be down eleven percent. But they're all down. And then yeah. all of a sudden something happens. One might be up three percent. One might be up four percent. One might be up one percent. But they're all f- tracking together. And it's you know once and it used to not be like that. You know, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum followed itself really well. You know, and then you had 
Dogecoin over in the corner that was like eating crayons just going fucking nuts because yeah. you know Doge is I mean not Doge uh, you know Bitcoin is the steady explosion of growth and then you have uh, then you have Dogecoin over here that Elon Musk tweets something and all of a sudden this thing's up you know fifty percent yeah you know, for no reason in twenty minutes yeah, yeah. And for no reason no reason because internet yeah because of the internet and then. You know, oh, uh, a bunch of investors got together two or three years ago and used their profits from Dogecoin and sponsored a race car in in in, in NASCAR. And a NASCAR race car was sponsored by Dogecoin. Had the Shiba Inu on the front, the whole nine yards. That's the one that should have rolled the wall to victory. Well, he essentially he didn't <laughs> ride it to victory, but he wrecked out towards the end of the race, and they had the start finish line cam. And you're just seeing the start finish line, and this and the car is wrecked sideways, and it just slides across the camera, and all you see is the Doge Dog just sliding by. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, you you it, you were watching it on NASCAR. I watched the race. You know, um, as soon as the race started, and they announced him in the Dogecoin Chevy, whatever whatever car he was in, you saw Dogecoin jump up. You know, <laughs> and now here's the funny part. Here's the yeah. funny part. When he wrecked his car, you know, you would think, oh, he wrecked his car. Everybody's going to sell out of Dogecoin. No. No. It, it, went up it more. It went up more because people were talking about it. it that's it. Yeah. It's all done on what people are talking about is that that's what makes crypto move. And it's, yeah. it's so weird. Well, now. literally an influencer can tweet out something or yeah. say something on their Twitch stream or their YouTube video say one word about it and all of a sudden that coin yeah. or that currency will jump up. You know, Elon Musk was tweeting like coded phrases that was causing the markets to move. Yeah, to the moon. To the moon, yeah. <laughs> he would he would tweet to the moon or um or a would, picture of a dog on a moon yeah. or like or he would or he would post um uh he would tweet the word hold but it's misspelled. H O Yeah. yeah hodl. H O D L H O D L and he would tweet that, and then all the people that are in the know go, "Oh, that's a that's a reference to you know hold the line, don't sell, buy more, keep going," and people would buy more. Yeah. You know? um, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, I, I per, another example is when it bled over into the into the stock market with GameStop. The same people that were trading Dogecoin were balls deep in the in the in the GameStop uh, yeah. pump and dump, and I mean. We're talking, you know, GameStop was filing for was going to file for bankruptcy. That their stocks were worth it was less than five dollars a share, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, we, you know, yeah. what?" And they how, got saved by an internet nerd. What yeah. was his name? Kit, Cat Kitty. Oh, I don't remember. I don't but remember yeah, it was either. just it was a it was a group of people on the internet. It was like, well, we can't let this happen. So they started buying up GameStop and they started spreading it on the internet. You know, you know, we got to keep GameStop alive. GameStop has kept us nerds alive. You know, and so they dumped a ton of money into it, drove the value up over two hundred dollars. You know, they got they, up to like three hundred and eighty dollars yeah, at like was, the peak. It was crazy. <laughs> and meanwhile, what the best part of it was is there was major hedge fund companies, the corporations out there going, "We're going to short this company because it's going to crash." Like it's going. Um, uh, Bain Capital, which was Mitt Romney's um, Mitt Romney's um, investment firm that he created. You know, he was, the bank capital was working against GameStop. They were shorting the stock, trying to get the, the, the value to go down. News broke that, you know, Mitt Romney's Bain Capital was trying to short GameStop. All of the nerds on the internet that called themselves progressives and liberals, what did they do? They bought. And they bought. Yeah, and buy they more. Bought. <laughs> you know, so all of those, all of those, uh, you know, short tickets that they had, you know, that they had put against the stocks cost them a ton of money. Because the mm -hmm. stocks never fell, and you know, finally, you know, the the interest in it kind of waned and gave up, and now GameStop is trading at nine dollars, twenty six dollars right is, now. Is it even that much? Yeah. Uh, see, I have it still saved on my Weeble. Um, it's twenty six ten right now. Still more than it technically should be worth. Oh yeah, still way up. Yeah, twenty six ten. You know, way more. Uh, I traded in AMC. Because AMC was doing the same thing during COVID, is AMC was like, oh, we're going to go out of business because nobody is going to the movie theaters right now because of COVID. 
and so then it got jumped and the same not nearly as much but still the well, same you, kind of trend if you you could overlay and you still can you can look at um gamestop and amc's um trackers right now and they're identical you know, they're not identical in price but their movement their buys and sell vol- i mean the volumes are yeah the, the kind of the pattern the pattern is almost identical and you yeah. know, I, I made a bunch of money off of amc uh, I got in when it was trading at nine dollars, and I rode it all the way up to when it hit. Uh, it was like fifty five dollars. Yeah, it's gonna say it didn't go to like forty or fifty. Yeah, it or something. went way up. And um, I had a buddy of mine. I told him I, he because he was you know we were heavily into it, so I was talking about it all the time. And he messaged me and he's like, I don't know anything about the stock market, but I have some extra cash. Would you help me make some money? I'm like, sure, no problem. You know, you know. PayPal me the money, and I'll deposit it into one of them. I'll create a separate account for you, and um, I I'll, I'll hope you make money. And yeah. and he goes okay. So he sent me it's like three hundred bucks, and between AMC and a couple of uh, marijuana stocks, uh, I gave I made him back an extra like five hundred dollars on top of his yeah. investment. Marijuana and, stocks are a good one. There, I I was doing a lot of them during well, that few months where I was trading. What what I do with mine when it comes to and this is please don't take this as any form of financial advice. Uh, uh, financial advice. This is just personal experience. I'm going to tagline that right now. Um, when I was trading in marijuana stocks, I wasn't trading on the actual marijuana stock companies. What I was doing is I was in, I was researching. Okay, who are they? Who are they partnered with? So I found a construction firm in California that was that had the contract to build the dispensaries for this one company. That's all they did. Oh yeah, is they were just building the dispensaries, and they were the one that I was investing <laughs> in. You know, it was like I was finding these other like smaller ones because I mean I didn't have a lot of money to play with. Um, you know, so I didn't want to find a stock that I had to put up, you know, thirty, forty, fifty bucks for a share. You know, for 30 bucks, I could buy 30 shares in this other company, you know, and really work the numbers that way, which is what, you know, how, how small traders work. So I was finding these like, you know, one, two, three dollar stocks that were connected to the marijuana industry, but they weren't producing marijuana itself and did pretty well. Yeah, that's pretty smart, too. Yeah. So, but please yeah, so, do not take this as financial advice. Do not. So write all this down. <laughs> we we want to hear your report next week on the marijuana stocks that you bought. But I mean, and honestly, now I mean, once again, this isn't uh, this isn't financial advice. But if I was investing right now personally, I would be investing in more marijuana stocks because a lot of states legalized it this time around. There's a number yeah. of states that had it up as pro- proposals to decriminalize it or straight up legalize well, and it. And you got it. you got tax season coming up, and they're yep. all going to be making money. Yep. Yeah. It's it, this is a this is a great time to invest. I mean, right now is a great time to invest because you're getting into the end of the year. You have a lot of businesses that are going to be making a lot of money because it's the holiday season. So, if you want to get into investing, this is a fun time to get in because it's going to be fucking crazy. So. Yeah. I might. I'll probably get in next year again. I might. I, I haven't decided if I'm going to or not because when I filed my taxes, I, I, um, it took fucking forever because I had. It was over 200 line items, on oh, yeah. you know when I was filing long form for my my profits and loss, um, you know, and it sucked because it was like, oh, you know, I had. You know, seventy-five. You know, line items that were like seventy-five cent loss, fifteen cent loss. <laughs> you know, twenty-two cent gain. You know, and it was just like fuck me. But I mean, that's what I was doing. I was you know twenty-two cent gain on what was probably a two you know a two cent stock. So <laughs> it was good money. But yeah, it adds up. It adds up, and that's what I was doing. Is I had a hundred plus the, investments of you know fifty cents to a dollar a piece. I still think the best way is to do long-term stocks and dividend stocks, but those aren't as fun. It's probably best to really do like a mix. Well, you're supposed to. You should you yeah. should do a little in both. Um, and my grandfather, for example, um, he loved to play the stock market. Uh, I mean, he treated it that was his entertainment. He would go he yeah. would go and sit down at his investor's office, and he would just be constantly watching the news and watching the tickers and whatnot. And he would be putting in live trades, you know, all day long. 
and it was in penny shares or penny stocks. I was going through his um, tax returns and his his stock his stock receipts, you know, after he passed away, and we're talking he would put fifty thousand dollars on a stock that was eight cents a, a share. Stock. Yeah, eight cents a <laughs> share. You know, and hope it would go to nine. Yeah, and it, and he, it did. I mean, my grandfather when he passed was very wealthy. Yeah. But I mean, and that was that was his that was his time that was his pastime. But yeah, but, I think if you do it right, like we said, and don't get emotional, yeah, and pull out when you're supposed to, and don't do the dumb mistake that I, again, I didn't lose money, I broke even, but I pulled out and was like, I need to rethink it before yeah. I get myself in trouble. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, with him, uh, what he did with his big stocks is he picked stocks that that pay dividends, and that's what he lived yeah. off of. I mean, yeah, th- those are the ones you want to invest long and just let it sit yeah. and keep pumping a little bit more in and just let it build. Yeah. My my grandfather put in like ten thousand dollars on the Facebook IPO. He didn't even know what fucking oh, yeah? Facebook was. Had no clue. I really I really want to get Coke. Yeah, Warren Buffett's yeah. big in Coke. Yeah. And I really want to get Coke. And I learned that Coke's fucking like the seventh biggest yeah, they own corporation yeah, in the world. In everything. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he he had a lot of um, uh, Coke shares. He had AT and T. Like he had all of these like classic stocks. He had GE and. Um, Oh, uh, what's what's um, Warren Buffett's uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway? Um, yeah, yeah, you know he he had a bunch of those that were paying dividends, and he was getting like, well, he had it set up to where he had all these stocks that were paying him dividends, and then he had it set for, okay, I need it was something crazy. It was like three hundred dollars a month is what he was living off of. Yeah, and, and all the other all the other dividends that were coming in was just reinvested. So he might have made a thousand dollars in dividends well he he only kept the three hundred dollars and immediately reinvested the seven that's all he did like all day long was just sit and play the stock market and the heart that when you really get yourself money. in trouble is when you want to get rick rich quick you can there is no such thing yeah no you can be thing. rich if if you want to be rich later in life i mean it sucks of course you'd like the money now i like the money now too but if you want to set your kids up, and mm-hmm. it, it's actually pretty easy. And like I said, I wish I started earlier. I wish I had more in the accounts I have now, but right. I just barely started like a year and a half ago. Well, I mean, if I would have started 10 years ago, I'd have, you know, 100 times more than what I have now. <laughs> you know, the fact that you're in a position where you're able to invest at all, because it's, it's really low. It's like, what, 17% of Americans are in the, are invested in the stock market? Yeah, like, something like crazy. that. I was just looking at the Berkshire excluding... Hathaway, and I was blown away. I didn't realize one stock was that much. It was like, it, last time I, the last time I looked at it years ago, it was like $1,000 a share. No, no, no. What is it? It's $469,047 really? right now. Yeah, it I, went up $11,382 today. I remember, <laughs> I remember when I was in high school, we had to do a stock market game. And, yeah. And that's when I knew it was $1,000 a share. Because I bought one, because they gave us ten thousand dollars, ten thousand play money, and oh, we, yeah. you know, we played the stock market, and you know, I I went really serious. I went to my dad, went to my grandfather. Said, "What should I invest in?" You know, and you know, I remember buying a thousand dollars in Berkshire Hathaway, and but it, we did the same thing. We but we invested in fun stuff. We invested in Coke and Pepsi and Anheuser yeah. Busch and imagine Playboy. if you actually put a thousand dollars in Berkshire Hathaway that back then. Oh yeah, your money went up four hundred times. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> enjoy. Yeah, but I mean that's basically. I mean, yeah, you know, Warren Buffett. He's an incredibly smart man, and mm-hmm. you know he but, owns the company that I work for. Oh, he does. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Berkshire Hathaway owns uh, the company I work for. I mean, they own a shit ton of stuff. Oh, yeah, they so own so. everything. I mean, they're a huge, <laughs> huge, huge corporation. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's absolutely wild. And if you have the opportunity to do it, definitely experiment in it because it is a very valuable lesson there, that you can pass yeah. on to people. There's lots of websites and ways you can do it with literally no money. Just yeah. mess around, do it for free, yeah. play with it. A lot a lot of websites are out there that you can just play for free. You know, you get in and like the same thing, they give you a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, ten whatever you whatever it's set up for, and you mm. choose the stocks and you watch your portfolios and it would grow and move along with the stock market. And just to kind of understand how the market works and, and 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 things like that, but it's a it's something that is really barely, if at all, taught in schools. 
and yeah, it's not talked it's not talked about and i wish it was because if you i'm gonna i'm gonna teach my kids it and when in their teen years help them open accounts before they're even 18 around 15 16 yeah. the second they start making money or yeah. i'm giving them money for chores or whatever the sooner you start even if you're only putting in a dollar a day or you yeah. know ten dollars a month or whatever even if it's nothing if yeah. if you started that at 15 versus if you started at 30 it's so many oh, it's hundreds huge. of thousands of dollars yeah. of difference it's huge 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 di- uh, gain in money and it, yeah and it's something that's not taught that needs to be taught and make sure that they fully understand it because i find it hilarious that you have people today that are you know voting pro or con all oh, the economy's doing good or the stock market's doing great you don't even know how the stock market works. Like, yeah. You know, you, you, you can't even tell me, you know, what these, what this is, what this is in the stock market. And you're thinking you're going to, you're going to vote that way. There needs to be more education on it because a lot more people would understand what's going on in our economy and how it works. And it's something that, you know, really, really needs to be done. So but anyway, what do you think? I think that's an episode. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we promise we won't, uh, make another political, boring old man shouting at the clouds episode <laughs> next time. <laughs> well, I think our I think our uh, listener base is aging with us. So you yeah, know, I was maybe, I was just gonna mention yeah. that. Like, uh, I wonder if any of our younger gaming audience has invested. And I was like, nah, all our audience is probably like upper twenties, maybe maybe younger thirties. But <laughs> yeah, uh, either way, invest now, start now, invest in Pig's Pod. We're going public. Uh, Twenty twenty five pig look for the pig stock is there a pig stock Hold i on. guarantee there's a pig stock um, pig stock while you're looking it up i do want to give a howlet shout- group who the fuck is that I french give, aerial work i want to give a huge shout out to one of our beloved listeners um our buddy rabowski got married this weekend oh yeah i yeah. saw the pictures from the wedding yeah it's amazing he looked good i can't yeah. believe it Fucker, she somehow put well. him together yeah I was gonna say, pretty girl goofy looking guy i just don't understand yeah but yeah shout out to rob for that because uh you know he's a it's sucker crazy getting, getting married at 52 married. i can't believe it 52 i thought it was 55 it's, it's never too late to get married yeah, yeah. or invest yep, yep. love waits <laughs> for no one so yeah uh, shout out robowski happy uh, happy um Happy wedding or whatever you're supposed to say. Congratulations on getting a tax write-off. Merry married, or I don't know what you say. <laughs> happy married. Yeah, happy married. There, there you go. Happy married. Yeah, congrats on your tax benefits. Yeah, yeah. yay, you're in a new tax bracket now. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> mm, oh, shit. Uh, what's your cream of the week? <laughs> mm, my cream of the week? Uh, my cream of the week is I've been getting into doing a lot of hobbies uh, here lately, and yeah. I have taken up the hobby of uh, chain mail, making mm. chain mail stuff. See, this is this You're is chaining I, mails to the wall. I'm chaining mails to the wall. That's why uh, Robowski went ahead and got married because he could take himself nice. off the market. You forced him. Yeah. <laughs> so th- this is this is what I've made so far. See if it'll. Are you making it out of no? That's not bottle cap or uh, uh, soda pop thing. What is that? No, this is just this is just wire. Just rings. Yep, this is just wire rings. Uh, Twelve millimeter. Ooh, it doesn't focus. Um, no, it's something I've, I've I've dabbled in it in the past and got. Frustrated. It's so long. I can't even imagine. I I guess that's all they had back in the day is time. Yeah. That's, everyone just had time. So. Yeah. I mean, what else were you going to do all day long? I mean. You didn't have a stock market to play. You didn't have Apex to play, which we got to get to here in a minute. Yeah. Um, you know, they had nothing else to do. So, yeah, we'll see how long that that's gonna that, that's the startings of a um, uh, head cow. Uh, oh that, yeah. Yep. That's uh, that's probably a good place to start. Be doing before doing like full body. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't. I don't know if I'll ever actually make a shirt. Um, I've talked to yeah. a lot of people. Like, oh, That's got to be so many thousands of fucking rings. Well, not only that, it's it's the weight. I oh, mean, that's it's, true. It's incredibly heavy. And you you got one gram, and then you times that twenty thousand. Now that's a fucking a shit hundred eighty pound fucking vest. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's crazy. You know, I figure um, when I figure when the head cow's done, it's probably going to weigh somewhere between fifteen to twenty pounds, and it's just going to be all here on your yeah, head. Just and your that. Neck. Yeah. So. It's just something you know. Try my hand at it, you know. See, see if I can huh. do it. It's that's all. I'm, it's it's. This is just proof of concept for me. So, what's your cream nice. of the week? 
Uh, well, I thought I wanted, but I can't remember if I mentioned it before because I'm pretty sure I did. I swear we mentioned it, but I can't remember. No, I definitely mentioned it. Did I mention Sweet Tooth before? Uh, I don't think so. I'm almost positive I did. Well, I don't know. That's my cream of the week. If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. Sweet oh, Tooth. Oh, yeah. Yes, you have. Yeah. The, the... I'm pretty sure I did mention it before. Yeah. I just came up again because I, I was reminded of it today, uh, watching an old podcast, uh, another podcast, almost as good as ours. But, uh, yeah, I believe the second season comes out in summer next year or something. So if you haven't seen it, just watch it. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before, but if you have new listeners or old listeners that just didn't listen to me before, you need to watch it. Sweet Tooth is so fucking good. It's a, it's amazing. Uh, until Arcane came out, the whole that whole year, I was like, Sweet Tooth is the best fucking show I've seen. And then Arcane came out, and Arcane was a fucking masterpiece. But Sweet Tooth is amazing. If you haven't seen it, you'll you'll like it. I I, I guess maybe it's not for everyone. Maybe you won't like it, but I doubt it. I feel like you'll like it. <laughs> it's that good. Uh, yeah, other than that, you know, you know how we do. Sometimes political, sometimes gaming. Always incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes crypto, sometimes financing. But not financing advice. Mm-mm. Never financing no, advice. No, 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 no. <laughs> we do not give financial advice on this podcast. Yeah. But by the way, make sure you took notes and invest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye, Oreo. <laughs>